So, but we, we don't know. I know there were some um, giants found <clears throat> in a western state. I can't say where, but <clears throat> there were two or three of them dug up recently. <clears throat> and we know there weren't Indians because of the artifacts with them. And I didn't see the stuff. I really don't know much about it. But I know that the, uh, the tribe that dug them up said they knew they weren't Indians, and they would have to be the artifacts, possibly the armor, uh, or something else. <clears throat> uh, as far as we know, the giant men that were inhabited America, at least, were pretty much uh, using metal. You know, we don't, we just don't know a lot about them, though. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I think, I think what we really have to probably do, if that's the case, is just rely on some of the biblical references. Like, uh, I know that I was reading the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter three, verses four, five, and eleven, and they're talking about the the kingdom of Og in Bashan. Mm-hmm. And what was really uh, striking about it was when you looked at the size of his bed. I think his bed was like. <coughs> 18 feet plus long by eight feet wide based on the uh, the conversion of the of the sizes that they gave in the bible mm-hmm. so uh that's that's pretty big right there and i think according to the bible that the giants actually got uh smaller as they as they reproduced because i don't think the strain was as uh strong from like the first generation because if you look at uh Joshua when Joshua was alive and he was and he went down to the promised land like when I read numbers 1333 before it said that we were like grasshoppers so mm-hmm. I was on your website and I noticed uh, a picture of you and your grandson and it looked like the giant that you guys were were taking the picture with I think I could see like the femur bone and this guy looked like he was over 12 feet tall yeah that is a uh... <clears throat> That's a, a sculpture I did based on a, a news article uh, on a newsletter. And this uh, <clears throat> road construction engineer from Egypt and uh, Urin Zora uh, was just writing in this Christian newspaper saying that, you know, we dug in the hills over there and we'd uncover these giant skeletons. And, uh, <clears throat> of course, most of them were destroyed or crumbled or, you know, were pot hunted kind of a deal. <clears throat> but they measured one femur. And it was, uh, would be 47 inches long. So if you blow up a, a human skeleton to fit that femur, it's a man that his rib cage comes at about 9 feet, bottom of his rib cage. So he's certainly 14 feet, probably more like 16 feet, maybe even taller. <clears throat> and uh, he would be about the size of King Og, probably. May have been some of those same people. But... Um, King Og's bed, you have to keep in mind, uh, even 100 years ago, back when there was no central heating in any of the homes, you know, if you had a fireplace in your house to uh, cook on and heat things up, a lot of people would, uh, would heat up rocks for the fireplace and put, put them in a basket or a leather bag or something and place those at the foot of the bed so you could hang your feet over the bed to keep them warm so you wouldn't get a cold. So when it's talking about King Og's bed, however the dimensions work out on that, it's a good chance that he was actually another foot or two longer and that he held his, hung his feet over the edge of the bed over uh, a thing of hot rocks, you know, to keep his feet warm. So, I mean, he may have been even taller than that. <clears throat> but um, the, the theme we have here, <clears throat> that's uh, they found several of those, and I think, there are probably some of those were in stone uh, sarcophaguses. Uh, and I've heard of a lot of other giants <clears throat> that uh, were buried in stone caskets 12 feet long, beautifully finished, you know, out of granite, some of them. And uh, they had technology that we don't really understand, <clears throat> had the ability to work stone we don't really understand. Uh, but <clears throat> there, there was some yeah, mighty, I've seen mighty some of the, the stone... <clears throat> like monoliths that they that they have. I forgot the area where it's actually at, but there's like a group of people standing in front of this like uh cut like a like a rectangle, but it's like incredibly huge and there's a lot of writers out there today like uh like Patrick Heron 
who believes that uh that like the the pyramids and a lot of these great monoliths that you see now were actually built by the giants it wasn't a horde of hebrew slaves building the great pyramid it was actually giants mm -hmm. well you probably know that hislop in his book two babylons <clears throat> says that uh, uh nimrod who also was a giant at eight feet hired the cyclops the giants the cyclop cyclopsian giants to build the ziggurat. Now, we don't know how big they were, but they they didn't have one eye socket. They had two eye sockets. But their, the reason they're cyclops, they, they have that the, the religion, kind of like Hinduism, where you have the third eye between your between your eyes above and your forehead. Right, like you know, where that, the penal gland is. Yeah, and <clears throat> it's kind of like when E.T., in the movie E.T., the E.T. puts a finger, points the finger at the little boy's head and says, I'll be right here. It's kind of like Jesus saying, I'll, I'll be, uh, you know, let the mind of Christ be in you. And that's what they're trying to affect. But I think that's what the Cyclops were. But apparently, according to Hislop, Nimrod hired them to build a ziggurat. And uh, they could have built some of those, t those temples. There's, there are stones over there in, I believe, Jordan and other places that are so big that you just can't, I don't know there's machinery today that can even move them. And they've been moved. Same way in Peru. There are stones down there, thousands of them, that are so big you can't move them today, and they're sitting on even bigger ones, and they all came from a mile away and down a valley and up a hill, and they're granite. So these stones were, were basically like, like Lincoln logs for the giants. <clears throat> well, maybe so, or, you know, you get 10 of these guys on a, a stone that weighs 60,000 pounds, and maybe they could just get ropes and stuff around it and move it. Maybe it didn't take them all day to finish it. If the if the stone came up to their chest, it'd be like four or five of us getting a stone, making a stone that's six feet high. It wouldn't be so daunting. So if you got guys that are 15, 20 feet tall, and they're working on a stone that's 15 or 20 feet tall, it's not so daunting to them. <clears throat> it it does help explain some of those huge monolithic uh, edifices that we're not sure how they did it. We're not sure that, that the Inca people, as we know them, made some of those things. We're not sure they didn't. Apparently they did. But there's also evidence that there were giants among them. <clears throat> there's, yeah, there's a lot of uh, Indian tales, like from the, the Hopi and the, the Cherokee and the Iroquois, about the giants that used to live in the land. And they, and they pass it down from, from uh, generation to generation. Yeah. So yep. there's nothing new to them, but um, I don't. I, this seems to me like giant evidence, giant human evidence is like clearly like left out. I mean, how does this mm -hmm. affect the theory of evolution and Darwinism? <clears throat> well, it messes up the theory of evolution because you've always got that little silly lineup of monkey to man, like the six feet tall man we are today are the best it's ever been, and you can't explain a man like uh, Goliath these brothers and these other giants the Bible mentions that had six toes, six fingers, two rows of front teeth. The Bible doesn't say that, but other reports do. And doing all these exploits and these giant edifices and things, that just doesn't fit in there with, uh, you know, the little lineup. They want man to basically still be trying to learn to speak when the mammoths come around. It's just ridiculous. But what about is Darwinism falls under that as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, Darwin, I, he, you know, I don't know what he thought about giants. If anything, now they've dug up a lot of giants in Europe. Uh, I'm not so sure how many in England, but I know in Italy, even recently they've been digging up, you know, eight-foot-tall women and stuff. And there are many over there in France, other places that are really, really big. Uh, so he's had to have known something about them. But uh, there are some. I know of one in Germany. There's a monastery that's paleontology was telling me about that they had a painting of a big leg bone there and uh, of a giant and he's smiling and I said what was it a mammoth bone he yes he says and I said well they weren't all mammoths and he didn't say no so there may have been people were trying to uh, discredit the Bible so the Bible talks about giants if, if you can blame them all on just being mammoth bones then you make the Bible seem like it isn't true. And that's really what was going on in the 1800s there. They were, they were really fighting the veracity of the Bible. And, of course, that's 
the, the, the child of that now is modern day evolutionism, <clears throat> uh, radical evolutionism. Uh, but that's but Darwin couldn't have uh, little bitty people, and he couldn't have real big people in his lineup. It wouldn't work. <clears throat>